you know, just to really reintroduce myself, I'm Brian Cohn. I'm the, the new Science Hub Program Manager. Um, you know, the purpose for today is really just to kind of help students get to know you as a person more than as just like a faculty member and to kind of understand uh, what your goals are, what they can do to be successful, you know, kind of giving them an inside look before they get here for the fall semester. Right. Absolutely. Those um, are all great things. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just be asking you kind of informal questions. Feel free to 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 just you know do to your ramble thing. how as as professors do. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know. So you know, my first question I've been asking that I would love to learn about is you know if you could tell me just a little bit about why you got into teaching, why chemistry, like how did that happen for you? Okay, so th yeah, that's two stories, and I'll I'll try to be brief with both. But I yeah. love telling these stories. I think because it shows students how I found my position because no position is one linear path, right? We all, our careers are all different and you go into college thinking, oh, I'm gonna go do this. And sometimes you get some swerves along the way. So number one, chemistry, I'll, I'll answer the second part first. Um, I remember specifically being in high school and people asking me, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And I'm like, I don't know. I like math. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very mathematically inclined and it's one of the things that I absolutely love. It's not for everybody, but I think everybody has a thing that they like, right? And so it's like, well, maybe I'll be a math teacher, right? And like, well, okay, how, how do I inspire people to do math? Like, I like it, but I don't know how we use it. I know that you know, uh, counting in a cashier, right? You need to be able to make change, but that's not upper level math. So how do you do that? And so I had a, a biology teacher who pushed me into uh, doing a summer research project at Davidson University, who pushed me to do this really crazy science experiment where I was taking a, a blood glucose monitor and measuring the amount of sugar, the blood sugar in worms after I put sugar in their dirt and um, she kind of pushed me down the science path because I think she saw that spark in me. But the year after uh, I, I, I took a chemistry course and I was like the very first week this was for me because we did some dimensional analysis. All it was was converting between things. And I'm like, this is it. I'm going to make a career out of this because I can see the applications here. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a weird nerdy kind of a uh, thing, but it was the thing for me. And I, I knew that that was the direction I needed to go. Uh, so then fast forward a little bit and I go to college. I went to NC State University and uh, NC State uh, were there for my orientation and they have a tutoring program. And my dad, uh, who always knew that I, I loved working with people, tutoring and teaching. My mom was a teacher. I think he saw it in me, just like he saw it in my mom. And he pushed me to apply to this uh, peer tutoring program. And from there, uh, I did that for one year. And then after that, I applied to be an SI leader and we have SI at VCU. And I absolutely love SI because it, it is the reason that I decided to become uh, a, a professor and go into academia. Wow. I loved working with students. I love the peer aspect of it. I love the transfer of information um, and it just, propelled me from there. That's, that's awesome. So, yeah. you know, I guess then going into, from a student's perspective, you know, coming into one of your classes and, you know, there's so many of them, how do they, how do you suggest they get involved in their interest for chemistry or, or what, what are your recommendations for them to really get ingrained in preparing for your class and, you know, that, those kind of things to be successful? Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a lot you can do there. I think, um, number one is, is coming to class, uh, I think is, is a real basic thing that, um, can be a little difficult, um, uh, because you're now in charge of being there yourself, right? There's nobody that is going to, uh, get you in trouble if you don't go into class. What will get you in trouble is you're great at the end if you, uh, you're suffering because of that. Um, but I think that we want to talk about more higher order things there as well. There's a lot that you can do to get involved with your passions when you come to a university. Uh, chemistry specifically, if you're really interested in, in science and, and STEM kind of fields, 
Um, it is never too early to get interested and involved with, say, uh, academic research, right? That's a way that we take what we learn in a classroom and apply that uh, into, you know, unfounded science, right? You know, things that have never been done before. And it's really hard, but it is very satisfying when we get that done. Um, and so you can take a lot of what you've learned from the classroom and even, even lab and combine that together to study brand new things. And even, uh, even freshmen uh, can get into a lab, right? All you need to do is, is talk to a professor, find somebody whose interests work with you. And then I think this is the part that's also not discussed as much. Even more importantly is, is a professor or somebody that, you're, that you mesh well with. Mm -hmm. So that requires actually having a conversation with somebody um, and seeing if their style, if, if you need somebody who you want to um, look over you a little bit more, right? Because you're a little, you're not as confident and that's perfectly fine, right? If you want somebody where you're more team oriented or if you just want to go and be like, hey, Give me a task and I'm going to go do it myself because I love being an independent person, right? There's a lot of different styles people work with and right. um, finding that style is just as important as finding something that interests you. Great. So kind of going off of that then, you know, talking about building these relationships with professors, you know, building a relationship with you. How should a student do that in such a large class? How, how do you find for your own teaching style and, and resources that are successful for students to, to get to know you, to, to utilize you properly as a resource? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that is the biggest struggle of, of being in a large university. Um, we, the benefit we get from it is that we have one of everything that you would want here, right? Yeah. Um, but when you are a single person in such a large classroom of 180, 250 people, um, I think taking the initiative is important. I think if you have a question, you don't have to ask it during class, right? Because that can feel a little awkward, though I totally appreciate when people have questions in class because if you have the question, somebody else probably has that question as well. And so you just need somebody to ask it. And I've been doing this long enough that uh, either it makes co complete sense to me already, or um, I've misspoken somehow, right? And it's good to clear that up. But if you're not comfortable asking in class, come and ask me after class. Okay. Uh, I try to end, uh, I, I've, I've learned that if I end a little bit early, people feel free to come up and ask me questions, even if it's something real short, right? And, and I'd be happy to answer that. But then my email is always open. I have on my syllabus, and I really stick to this, and I think a lot of students appreciate this, that if you send me an email, I will answer you in 48 hours. Um, and that's only, uh, I, I only put 48 hours because the weekend, right? And then you need a little bit of time and away from that email stuff. Um, but uh, that, sometimes that's not true for every professor, right? Everybody's a little bit different, but yeah. um, that is the main way that I try to work with such a large number of people. Um, okay. And I and I think that's important, right? Having ha so, if I want to generalize this, you know, figuring out just like we're talking here, right? Figuring out how your your professors work is just as important as well. Yeah. So so then speaking of that, I know for me this was always an issue in college. Like, what level of question or reason to come talk to you is there? You know, I know that when I initially went into college, I always felt like I wouldn't reach out to the professor and say I really, really needed to. Mm -hmm. um, like what's your what's your minimum of like why I should reach out to you by email or, or come in for an office hour or something? Anything, absolutely anything. Uh, there is no question that is too stupid because there are no stupid questions. If you are here to learn, right? And so I ask questions daily that sometimes make me feel like, well, I really should know that answer. And I try to use that as the fuel instead of the barrier that um, I am here to learn. I want to know this information. I can't figure it out for some reason, right? Um, especially after I've spent some time thinking about that and, and tried to research it, right? Um, sure. And if I can't find it, 
come find me or uh, the other, all the other um, resources that are available, um, whether it's come see me in the science hub, right? Come see me in office hours, come see me in, after class, before class, uh, talk to peers in my class, talk to SI instructors in my class right there. The key is knowing what all those different levels are and all, where all those resources are. Mm -hmm. um, and then feeling open about going and asking those questions because they are here for you. Okay, so then, then going off of that, what does a successful student typically look like in your class? Obviously in BC, we have a, we have a spectrum of students where they're gonna walk in and chem is just easy for them. And we have the other end where this might be their first chem class or second chem class and they're still getting used to it. What does it take to be successful in, 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 from your perspective, whether it's the type of study habits they have, the resources they have, what, what does that look like for students typically? I think the number one trait of a successful student is somebody who is organized. You, okay. know, you know where you need to be, when you need to be there. And beyond that, you've taken your time and you've thought about, I'm gonna work on this during this period or this block of my time. And then I'm gonna work on this block at this time. And you've kind of sorted yourself out, um, whether it's at least for the day, if not for the week, or more, and then to be flexible as uh, issues arise, right? Because there's always a monkey wrench that can be thrown into things. So uh, this is something that I learned in undergraduate and then further when I went into graduate school is uh, every morning when I wake up, I, I think about, well, what, are, what do I need to get done for today? Mm -hmm. And then to have realistic expectations about how long those things might take. Um, I'm really bad about how long it's gonna take me to answer my email. Um, sometimes, I sit and I need half an hour to really write an email. And sometimes I really have to push myself, say, hey, that's enough. I need to move on to the next thing. So I think that's the, the second trait that I would think about of that flexibility and mm -hmm. that self-reflection. I think that's the big thing, self-reflection, constantly going back and seeing, okay, where am I at? How am I doing? And then thinking about, well, where do I need to improve? And where am I doing well enough that I can let that lie and move on to the next thing? Okay. So I like those two traits. So a lot of our students, right, when they come in, maybe they're, they're not the most organized yet, right? Like that's a skill that takes a lot of us years to develop. So as a student comes in and maybe that first month or so, they kind of struggle with being organized and they see themselves kind of falling behind in your course how, what do you recommend for students who are looking to then catch up once they've kind of maybe gotten more comfortable with being organized or they're still kind of figuring that all out? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, because you're, you're, you're thinking about the process here, right? Of, okay, I'm improving. Um, and so I think number one is, is uh, well, I think the first thing I think about is that, that communication, right? Talking with your professor about, hey, I, I know that I've, I've struggled earlier on, but I, I get this now and I'm looking to improve. Um, and, and oftentimes this is in the scope of grades, right? But it doesn't just have to be in terms of grades. It can be, think of, it can be okay, I've missed some assignments. I really wanna make sure that I get all these other assignments done. Yeah. I looked at the syllabus, right? Usually it's there, but I wanted to confirm that this is what is in store or this is what is coming up. Um, and I think that's a, a good way to phrase that of, okay. uh, you know, trying that we're working on this together, not just uh, this is everything that, uh, just tell me everything I need to know, right? That the sure, more sure. information that you can share um, makes it easier for the person that you're communicating to, to also share back, right? And so it becomes this two-way network. Great. So, so it's great to know that students, you know, should they be trying to think like, well, I don't know how to become more organized. They can maybe come to you and talk about that Absolutely. and you can work through like, this is what that could look like. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. Um, so kind of jumping into, you know, where we can go with students where they have developed good communication strategies with you. I know a lot of students are always thinking about, especially as we have a lot of pre-health students or students interested in graduate school, that you know, 
looking for TA preceptorships, looking for letters of recommendation from faculty. What does that look like from your perspective? Do you, do you offer those kinds of things? Are you looking for something in particular from students where you offer some type of incentive like a letter of recommendation? Uh, so letters of recommendation are um, absolutely yeses, right? I, I feel like that's part of what my job is that, sure. um, I, well, I'll preface also, letters of recommendation are really hard, right? Yes. It, again, it requires work on both our parts, right? Because I am learning about you, but I also find it's really important to know uh, what kind of your story is. How are you selling yourself, right? Because I think we're constantly doing all these things, but you have to use that reflection to think about, well, what makes me as a whole rather than a sum of all these parts? And so there's a narrative and a story that goes along there. So a good example, that, that narrative that I talked about, those two stories about mm -hmm. how I got into teaching and how I got into chemistry are part, I think, of my entire narrative. And it, it gives me a direction and a story that you can understand what's going on there. Um, and, I, and, and you could probably tell that I had shared those uh, and I had practiced those because yeah. I had thought uh, significantly about those. And so being able to share information like that, I think is important to a professor. And obviously when you start looking for a letter of recommendation, you've had some time in their class and you've had some experience and some time uh, at school, right? At, at uh, VCU or, or wherever. And so you can pull some of that together. It's not like you're gonna be asking to write somebody a letter of recommendation the second week of class, right? Um, but it is, so it is, it is nice to be able to share as much information as possible. Um, but I think it is also important to choose professors that you feel like know you the best, not just the ones that gave you the best grade. Sure. Um, some of the best letters I've written for students are ones who have met with me often and showed growth and progress okay. over the course of the semester rather than, well, this student just absolutely killed every test right away and they were in the top 1% of all students, right? That's, that's kind of a boring letter and it just yeah. reaffirms what's in, uh, uh, in uh, your GPA, right? But the one that, that I could say, well, you know, they really struggled the first test. And then we came and we met weekly or we met every other week or some amount of time. And you could steadily see their grades increase as they realized they needed to better organize um, and get things on track and look at how they were able to achieve that. And by mm -hmm. the end of the class, um, they, they earned a B, but um, they still did absolutely stellar on these last two tests where they received or, or where they earned A's, right? That, that I think is a more compelling kind of letter mm -hmm. um, and something that you're not supposed to be embarrassed about. I think sure. showing that change is an excellent form of uh, a recommendation. Great, so then I guess off of that, for, our, for the strong student that is an A student, then how, if they did want a letter, what would you recommend? Should they come into office hours just to get to know you? Should they, I think, I, how, I how think, they connect? I think that's a really great idea, right? Um, increasing that communication is always better, right? If you, if you still are the student that's killing every single test, right? Um, that's absolutely great, right? You shouldn't, again, you, you shouldn't be embarrassed by that either because you are brilliant and you really connect with the material. But there, there's always more that you can learn, right? There, there has to be something that you're practicing, um, even if you get the material. And I think having that relationship with your professor or other people at the university, right? If it's, if it's not me that you need help with, um, it might be somebody else that you've developed a relationship, whether it's a tutor, an SI instructor, um, that I think also is helpful. Um, and then there are other, there are always multiple classes that you're taking, right? That you're not going to build that, um, that type of relationship with every single person that you meet. Yeah. You, you literally just can't, you don't have the time or energy. And so I think it's important for you to think about, well, who, who do I resonate with and mm -hmm. who do I think knows me the best? And, and one of the, I, I love your suggestion 
that if you feel like that, hey, I don't feel like I really resonate with somebody, then taking that initiative to just go and meet with somebody, even if it's a small question, right? Even if you're, yeah. hey, I'm, I was reviewing this test and I, I see I got this question wrong um, and I wanted to check in with you and see that I understood this correctly or, um, hey, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, the future, right? Uh, one of my favorite things to discuss is uh, whether it's graduate school or medical school or research or I also really love uh, and had a great experience myself with study abroad, right? Mm -hmm. There are all these opportunities out there. And if you feel like that there's something that um, I might be able to overlap there, um, I'd love to have a conversation about that. That's awesome. Um, so then kind of going into different types of conversations than just academically, you know, a lot of our students are, are working on campus, off campus, have family needs, is there flexibility for those kinds of situations in your class? How do you want students to communicate with you when a personal emergency or issue comes up in the class? How would you like that being handled so that you can try to help as much as possible? Or, or what does that look like? That's a, that's a really great question because I think it's something that every classroom is set up differently. Um, in general, what I try to do is I try to build in those uh, kind of unexpected uh, occurrences into the class itself. Um, okay. I do that by um, having a lot of drop material. So I'll use the example of my Chem 101 from this past mm -hmm. year. And it's this is how I've set it up for the past couple of years now, is that we have tests and homework, right? Mm -hmm. So um, weekly homework and um, uh, it was every, a test every two to three weeks. So uh, the homework, I said, okay, I'll drop your lowest to homework grades. Um, and those are carte blanche uh, for whatever two lowest grades you have, whether you did it or didn't do it. Mm. Uh, and it's for when things get too tough, right? It's like, okay, I have three tests all next week and I need to be studying for those and I don't have the time to do that homework. Yeah. Now, I would love for all the students to do the homework because I think it's great practice uh, for the tests yeah. and to learn the material and to get, to engage with the material. But uh, going back to what I said before, sometimes you have to prioritize what you're working on. And, and I get that, right? Uh, and the same thing for tests, right? Whether, whether it's because you were sick, um, whether it's because you had a death in the family, whether somebody else in your family is sick, whether it's, and, and this is when we were more face to face, but uh, whether it was traffic was bad and I was late and I, I couldn't get into campus, right? Yeah. I overslept, right? Yeah. That those entire range of reasons are applicable. We're human and we make mistakes and things come up that we weren't expecting. And so I want all of those reasons to be applicable, whether it's an excused or unexcused reason. And so uh, by having those uh, applicable for everybody, right? I think is one fair for everybody in the class, okay. but, uh, you know, still gives people the ability to be human. And I think that's important. Well, that's, that's great. Um, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that that's already kind of been, you know, yeah. put into the class. That's, that's amazing. I definitely don't think I had that when I was, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's one of the things that students, um, have told me that they appreciate the most. Uh, now, it, it becomes a little more difficult when, um, you know, you start seeing these reasons stack up, right? And, and I, I am, I, I will draw that line and saying, hey, you already have these okay. uh, at your disposal. Um, it's like, well, I wanted to use those for when I did really poorly. Well, yeah, but you're, you, you've missed this test okay. or homework because of this reason. Um, and so that needs to be applied here. Okay. So my last question for you, and this is, you know, open to, to how you would like to interpret, how would you like your students to perceive you coming into this next school year and, you know, being reintroduced to, to VCU and campus? What's kind of what you're hoping for with that? Wow. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I don't want to say I'm concerned about, but I thought about because I am one of the, the people who is mostly going to be online this fall. Okay. All my classes are online. So my hope is 
that people feel open about talking to me. I think, obviously from my answers, I think they've all kind of hinted at that, but um, yeah. I, am, I am open to communication and I think that's what helps uh, us resolve issues and differences, but also get to know one another. And I think when we know one another, um, we, we can just be a family, right? And I think that's what's important that um, this is a, a unique time in your life that you will always look back with some degree of fondness. Mm -hmm. um, and, but uh, it only comes with as much effort as you put into it. In, sure. And not just, and, and I don't mean that academically, right? I mean that in terms of interpersonal communication. I think that's so important. Great. Thank you for answering all my questions today. I'm so glad that we were able to bring you into the, the science hub for this coffee chat. You're uh, so welcome.